Welcome back to CIS 165. This is your instructor, Victor Campos. So this is our week four lecture, which is based on chapter three of the book. Make sure you've read chapter three in our JavaScript and jQuery book before watching this video. Chapter three is titled Functions, Methods, and Objects. So we're going to have a lecture that expands on the concepts of functions, methods, and objects. To set ourselves up, I need a folder called week4, and I'm going to copy that index file that I set up a while ago as my starting point. I'll paste it into my week4, and then I'll start visual code so I can get to work. At the moment, I don't have any folders open, but if you do, you can go to File, Close Folder, and then we need to open the folder of week4. So week four is open, I can close other windows and open my index file and close the explorer. I've zoomed into my code so you can view it a little easier, but you can zoom in and out by pressing control plus or control minus on your keyboard. On a Mac you can press, I believe, command plus or command minus. So here's my code so far, the starting point file. I'll title this chapter three. And this H1, we can write an album from my collection. So this project is going to be about creating recommendations from your music collection. We don't have the knowledge yet to press a button to do something. So this will happen every time the project loads up, every time we refresh the screen. So I'll give myself a little space here and then I'll create a div. The div tag is basically a placeholder to display something on screen. If I give it an ID, then I'll be able to reference it via JavaScript. I'll call this show album. The purpose of this div of this generic placeholder is to show an album. So we start off in our script block and we've got the immediately invoked function expression that the chapter introduces. And the big idea is to talk about objects. JavaScript has a variety of objects built in, but we can create as many as we want, as many as we need. The book goes on to explain about how real world objects can be represented abstractly in a programming language. That's basically object oriented programming. So we're going to use constructor notation to create an object. So we'll start off with the function keyword. A function can be used for different things such as a collection of steps in JavaScript or to create an object with constructor notation. The object is going to be called album and the syntax is open and close parentheses space open and close curly braces. So we're going to create an object called album. And the convention is to use a capital letter when we define an object. Almost all of our other code is lowercase or has intercaps. But if we use a capital letter A as the starting letter of an object, we can quickly see that it is an object when we're looking at our hundreds, if not thousands, of lines of code. That's our syntax, no semicolon necessary at the end of that statement. And then I'll break that curly brace to multiple lines. Well, this object is going to be defined with various properties. So here we have the parameters that this object is made out of. This object will have an album name, comma, the name of the group or singer, the year of the album publication, and the genre. So when I create an album object, I need to define these four parameters. Making a note here, constructor notation for creating an object with four parameters. Next line, this dot album name is equal to album name. This is setting up that the properties of this object are based on the properties being passed in when we instantiate the object. This is just the syntax that it is, so it's easy to memorize. We're saying that in our case, 
the this keyword is used instead of the object's name to indicate that the property or method belongs to the object that this function creates. It sounds like circular logic, but we're saying that, for example, genre is defined by genre that we've passed into this object, not genre that might be used in another object. We can make a note that these are properties of this object. We will also have a method, so we can have a section of methods, this dot released. I'll set this one up a little bit different. Since it's a method, it is a sort of an action that we can call upon this object. Our syntax here is function parentheses curly brace. So something will happen when we call the released method, whereas if we call the genre property, it will kick back a value. But if we use the released method, there could be some calculations, there could be some results, something could happen on screen. So it's the syntax here. Function again. So in a sense, we're creating a sub-object of this object, but think of it more in terms about creating an action for this object. The object is album. And remember that function is another way to think about a, a sequence of steps. So this is similar to what we did on a previous exercise, just slightly different syntax because we are using constructor notation instead of object literal like we did previously. Inside of this function, we're creating a local scope variable, current year equal to. I want to check what the current year is. Whenever we use the released method of this object, album, I want it to check what is the current year. New instance of the date object, which is built into JavaScript, and that also uses the capital letter convention. So then all information about the current year is stored in the current year variable. var year offset. The purpose of this is we're going to create an album from our collection. And let's say it was published in 1997. So that album was published 20 years ago. This year offset will be a calculation that checks what's the current year, when was this album published, and how many years ago was that. So it's a simple subtraction. We say from the current year dot get full year method minus this year. So current year is an object that so current year is an object that holds the exact day and month and year when we ran this function, when we instantiated this object. It, we can therefore get the full current year from that object, in this case 2017. We will then subtract minus we will then subtract the year that we plug in when we create an album. And after that step, we will return the year offset. So whenever released method is invoked, we will get a year offset value. So let's see this run. Now I like to add comments when I create functions. I like to add a comment at the end of the curly brace of that function because this can be a whole bunch of properties and methods and sub-objects and, and so forth and I'm going to lose track of that semicolon. So I like to put a comment here, end album. This is just an indicator for myself that this is the curly brace that has ended my album object. You can be as verbose as you want. End of album object, for example. So to use this, I'm going to create another variable. This is outside of the function, outside of the constructor notation of creating this object. I'll call it album1 equal new album. Now that syntax looks very similar to line 27, where I created a new date. Well, date is built into JavaScript. It does a bunch of steps and it gives us a result. And we captured the result in current year. So here I'm saying, let's create an instance of album one based on the definition of what album is. 
when you hover over these items in visual code, you, you get the hint showing that you created this function, this object. It's an album. It takes an album name. It has group, it has year, and it has genre. So this will take arguments into the parentheses. We didn't need to put an argument. We did not need to put an argument into the date, although we could have. So here we're going to say, OK, we've got an album. And in the exact order that it was defined up on line 18, I have to specify the name of the album, the name of the group, the year of the album, and the genre. So let's say I'm going to start with the album, never mind, comma, quotes, by the group Nirvana, comma, from the year 1991, no quotes because it's a number, comma, quotes, genre alternative. So if I do some console output, I can see album one, and I can check if my code is running well so far. I'll save that. I'll go back to my project and run it in the browser. Again, I'm using Google Chrome, but you can use whatever. F12 for my developer's console. And I see that my output was an album. And this album is made out of album name, genre, group, and year properties, as well as released method. So what I can do is then say album dot, and visual code tells me, well, you have album name, genre, group, released in year. Let's say group. Give me the property of group from album one. Once I see these results, if I refresh it, I get the output Nirvana, because that is the property that I asked for. Since we have then a method released, the syntax there is open close parentheses. I've got the open and close parentheses of the released method plus the closing parentheses of login. And when I see that in the browser, I get 26. So this album was released 26 years ago, 2017 minus 1991. I'm going to create more albums, more of these objects. So I'm going to remove the semicolon at the end of line 33 because I want to do more. The semicolon is end of statement. I want to do more. I want to create more objects, more variables. So comma, album two. That will be assigned a new instance of the album object. I'm going to do another one in a moment, so comma. And here I'll add another album. Let's do the album Ramones by the band or the group Ramones from 1976, and its genre is punk. I'll do one more. Album 3 is a new instance of the album object. Se uh, semicolon there, end of statement. This will be the album MC Chris is dead. Yes, it is all spelled lowercase. Comma by the uh, group or the artist, MC Chris. Yes, it is all lowercase. And this was from 2008, and the genre is nerdcore hip-hop. So I've got three objects, album one, two, and three. And I can then say console log album three, give me the, give me the genre. And my output here gives me the property of that object. So making some notes here, what we did, instantiated we created an instance, instantiated three new albums based on the album object. And then, of course, here, console output of various objects or properties or methods. Now, I want to group together these three albums so that I can randomly choose one and display it on screen. Every time the page loads up, the app will run and pick a different album to display on screen. So I'm going to use a, an array. I'll call this Album Collection. We've looked at arrays before. An array is a variable full of variables. We had three different variables with three different pieces of data. A smarter way to do it, perhaps, is to group all of that separate data 
instead of in three arrays, in one array. And that's the point that we're doing here. We're creating an object called album1, and that's what we're saving in this array. Album1. As well as saving album2 and album3. So now this shorthand, basically, album3, represents all of the properties and values of the album title, the group name, the year, and the genre. So instead of three different arrays for each of the, instead of four different arrays for each of those four properties, they're all stored in an object, and all of those are stored in an array. So if I wanted to check this out, I can say album collection square brackets zero. That'll give me the zero with album in my array. That'll give me the zero with album in the array, the first album all of the information of that album. If I then were to say the zero with album dot group, it will only give me the name of the group of that first object. So our note here, storing each of the separate objects in an array. And the sequence that we add them does matter because the zero with item in the array is the first album. And we will learn methods a little bit later and techniques uh, for manipulating arrays a little bit more complexly, adding objects later, removing objects and updating objects and all of that. But we'll get to that a little bit later. Now that I've set up a way to create an object, I've created three objects, I've grouped them together in an array, I want to start to display them on screen, but in a random manner. I want a different album to be displayed every time the page loads up. So we'll create a variable called random album. This variable will pick a random album from the array, from the collection. So we've got the math.random method. This creates a number from the math object that is built into JavaScript via the random method. This creates a random number. Let's see that random number in action. Console log random album. When I check it in the browser, I get a random number. Oh, look at that. The random number is a fraction. So JavaScript automatically creates a random number between 0 and 1. And if you think about it, there are an infinite number of numbers between 0 and 1. Okay, well, I don't want a fraction of a number. I want a whole number. So we can get whole numbers by multiplying. So that's uh, the, the, the asterisk, shift 8, by multiplying to our maximum value, let's say 12. So give me a random number up to 12 is what that basically says. The result there is 8.7, 9.7, 8.7, 1.0, 11.3, 0.5, etc. So we can get up to 12. It still has that fraction, however. So I'm going to wrap parentheses around this calculation and then invoke the math.round method. So round the value that we get here, round it up or down. That result is then a 2, a 3, 12, 3, 10, 6. So now I get a whole number. Well, I just chose 12 to show you that it can choose any number. If I have 1,200, it's going to choose from all of those possible numbers. I want to choose from the number of albums I have saved. In this case, it would be 3. But before I hard code a value like this, I should be a little smarter and put a, a dynamic value here. Yes, I've currently got 3 albums, but in the assignment, you're going to create more than 3 albums. So you don't want to put an exact hard coded value there. We have a way to determine how many albums were stored. The album collection object has a built-in property that we can check how many things have been saved inside of it. It's its length. So we can say album 
collection dot length. It doesn't sound like that would be the right property, but when they invented JavaScript, that's the idea that they had. The length property of an array will tell you how many items are in the array. So create a random number up to the number of items, the length of the array, and round it up or down so that we don't get a fractional value. And in this case, I'm just going to get the same numbers over and over, 1 and 2 and 3 and 0 and 1, because I don't have very many items. But if you notice, I might get a 0 or a 3. The problem with a 3 is that I don't have 3 positions in my array. I have 0, 1, 2. So if I were to get a 3, that's actually looking outside of my array, and that's an error. We need to count from 0, 1, and 2. So here's the easy way to do it. Instead of, instead of letting it round up or down, I want it to always round down. So now I can only get a 0, a 1, or a 2, never a 3. To round down, I change this to math dot floor because the floor is down. So now I will only get values 0, 1, or 2. And yes, if I wanted to round up, I do round up to the ceiling. You just spell it as seal, C-E-I-L, ceiling. In our case, we need to round down to the floor. This will be a good note. Create a random number up to the maximum of the length of the array and round it down always. All right, to finally display something on screen, remember we've got a div, show album name. We need to create an object in JavaScript that represents this HTML node, and then we can change the properties of that node from being empty to displaying this information that we want. So next line, create a variable called l show album equal to document dot get element by id quotes show album. So now we've created an object based on the HTML node, and we can change aspects of it. L show album dot inner HTML equal to, for example, hello. That will print hello on the screen. On the previous activity, we used text content. And that, in this case, will give you the exact same results. But text content is simply text content. If we use inner HTML, what we can do is also write HTML that will be processed. So let's say I set this as a heading number two. So then that gets processed as HTML. If I have only text content, it will display literally that text content. So there's a couple of ways to do it. I like inner HTML because it lets me create HTML and it processes it. Create a JavaScript object based on the HTML node above. For fun here, I will create the text content version of this code. Display only text content in the HTML node or display text and HTML content in the HTML node. All right, so what I want to do is display a random album from the collection. lshowalbum.innerHTML is equal to album collection, square brackets, semicolon. I want to display one of the three possible albums. So I've got that random number, random album. This will take that random number, select the position in the array, and display it on screen. For example, then we can select its dot group. The result is on screen. We see 
every time we refresh one of those groups. Since there's only three possibilities at the moment, it's not quite random. The note here is in the HTML node, display a random albums property. Well, actually, I want to display everything about that album. And what I've put into the object is just the data. I want to write something meaningful that displays on screen. So I'm going to say, my idea is, I'm going to say, the album XYZ from the group ABC was published on 123. So before I display the dynamic data, I'm going to display some static data in a string. So quotes space plus the album space. So here I'll say album name. If I test it before going further, the album MC Chris is dead. The album Ramones, the album, etc. Well, I would like the album to be italicized. So here is where this HTML will come into play. If I start the em tag of HTML, this is going to display the album in italics. Now most HTML tags need a pair. Do you see what the problem is here? I want to start the emphasis tag italics and wrap around this album, but then I want to say more. So I'm not going to close that tag yet until I wrap it around the actual album. So I'm going to plus to continue. And actually, I'm going to move this to the next line just so that it's more readable. Plus quotes, end of the M tag, space by, space. I'm going to say the album Ramones by the group Ramones. So you see I've closed the M tag by continuing the string, string concatenation. Write a little bit of static content. Write some dynamic content. Continue static content. In each of those little blocks, we have a plus, and that's concatenation. We're adding together some content. The result is the Ramones by, never mind, the album never mind by. If I were to have closed the M tag up here in the wrong place, that's wrong because I've opened and closed the M tag and it didn't italicize. So next I want to say the name of the group. So I'm going to continue plus album collection based on the random album dot group. So the album MC Chris is dead by MC Chris. The album Ramones by Ramones. The album Nevermind by Nirvana. It knows to link them together, so to speak, simply because I created a random number up on line 48, and it's the same random number used twice here. It's not that it created two random numbers. As the code ran and reached line 48, it created a random number and stored it. We get a random number every time we refresh the screen. But that same random number stays in memory and we've used it twice. So therefore, the album name and the group are sort of linked together. I want to say the album Ramones by the Ramones was released on... So we've got a year to publish. So before the end of that semicolon, next line, plus the album Ramones by the Ramones was published in space plus. Time to get the next property. Album collection based on the random album number dot year. 
The album MC Chris is Dead by MC Chris was published in 2008. If I refresh it, the album Nevermind by Nirvana was published in 1991. So then I want to say, how long ago was that? The album Ramones by the Ramones was published in 1976, parentheses, XYZ years ago. So I'm going to continue this string. Next line, plus, quotes, parentheses. Now these parentheses are just going to be visible to the user. They're not anything special. And here I want to say X years ago. X years ago. And I wrote it this way so that I can show you that this is going to be a little bit more complex, your string. I want that X to be dynamic. That X will be album, collection, square brackets, random, album, dot, released, method. And what's complex is that this is not correct because it will literally write that code, not the calculation. I want that released method to actually be processed. So the trick here is I'm going to continue the string only up to this point, plus, and then continue the string again here, plus, quote, space. So continuation of the string where we've got the space and the parentheses then the dynamically created released method plus continuing the string, the words, space, years ago. Now the result, instead of it simply pr displaying that text in a dumb way, it processes it and says 41 years ago. Another album. The album Nevermind by Nirvana was published in 1991, 26 years ago. The album MC Chris is Dead by MC Chris was published in 2008, nine years ago. Lastly, I want to display the genre of the album. So I will continue this string plus quotes. The genre was space, and then I'll get the data from the array. Album, collection from the array, based on the random album number, give me the property genre. Oops, I was about to forget something important here. Let me go ahead and do it. This is, there's, a little, there's a little something wrong here, but let me show you what that is. Save it and run it. I get an error. Uncaught syntax error, unexpected identifier. Now here I am pulling back the curtain. I obviously have the project all planned out and uh, I cut out my mistakes anyway, but I wanted to show you here that sometimes you get mistakes. So pay attention to your console here because it may not give you the most useful error message, but it guides you to the right place by telling you that line number 65 is where you should be looking at. So I'm looking at line 65 and I wish it would tell me you're missing a plus sign. You're missing the concatenation. I'm missing it right here. It didn't tell me that. It's just telling me something's going on on line 65. It's trying to say a syntax error. You wrote the code wrong. So now with that plus sign, I go back and run it. No more problem. And did you also notice that nothing showed up in the viewport when, I, when that code was wrong? Let me put it back to show you. If I've got an error in JavaScript, basically all the JavaScript shuts down. So something that used to work up to this point, now nothing works. And that's the nature of JavaScript. It's very frustrating and confusing for beginners. But that's one way for you to figure out your errors. Backtrack to the point when it worked, and then try to figure it out after that. So I'll put back the plus sign right there. The code runs properly, and I see the album. Never mind. by Nirvana was published in 1991, 26 years ago. The genre was alternative. I want to clean this up a little bit by putting a, a period, and I also want to move that line to its own line. So because I can process HTML here, I can add a break tag, br, 
to move this sentence to its own line, and then I have to add a period so that I can see a period at the end of that sentence. The album Ramones by Ramones was published in 1976, 41 years ago. Next line, the genre was punk. Refresh. The album Nevermind by Nirvana was published in 1991, 26 years ago. The genre was alternative. And because I've got the algorithm all ready now, I can add a brand new album, and all of this will work just fine. I'm going to go back. I'm going to add album number four. So at the end of line 36, change that to a comma, because now I'm going to add album four, new instance of the album object, semicolon. This time I'm going to add the album The Chronic by the group or the artist Dr. Dre, comma, from Nine Deuce and genre, well, what do you want to call it? Rap, hip hop, gangster rap. We'll keep it easy, rap. Next, I need to add this album to the array so the rest of the algorithm can work. The album collection only includes the three albums that I created. So I want to add the fourth album. And there will be a way that we can add them automatically. We're not there yet. But now I've got four albums in the array and the rest of the algorithm works. The algorithm that I had to figure out to display this stuff on screen. That still works. So I can run it and I get the possibility of getting that album. There it is. The other albums are still there, but now I get the new album. The album The Chronic by Dr. Dre was published in 1992, 25 years ago. The genre was rap. So there you go. There is our look at creating objects in constructor notation using arrays to store those objects, retrieving them randomly, and displaying them on screen. We had a lot of string concatenation here, which was then processed as HTML, and it shows up on screen. Based on this, you will do your homework project. So check our class online to see what that is. This has been Victor for CIS 165. See you next time.